Today, we are excited to announce Lambda 2, our most advanced conversational AI yet. We are at the beginning of a journey to make models like these useful to people, and we feel a deep responsibility to get it right. And to make progress, we need people to experience the technology and provide feedback. We opened Lambda up to thousands of Googlers who enjoyed testing it and seeing what it was capable of. I'm Adrian Main, and I work at OpenAI. Uh, my title is Creative Applications, which means I get to play around with technologies like GPT-3, find out what some of the fun things we can do with this are, and you know, explore its potential, and then share it with you know people like you all. So working with GPT-3, GPT-3 is the large model, the engine that we created. OpenAI created this language model that was trained on a tremendous amount of data. They worked with Microsoft and built the fifth largest supercomputer in the world, and then fed it a bunch of textual information to see if this model could try to figure out how to finish a sentence, how to complete something, and what it would learn. Previously, we had done GPT-2, and GPT-2 was very impressive, and we weren't sure initially if we should even release it because it was very good at creating stuff that could fool people in certain situations. With GPT-3, we increased the size of the model tremendously, and it was a bet to see what would happen. What would happen if you use deep learning on a much larger amount of data and throw a much more computing hardware at this? What happens? And some people had predicted that you might get an incremental improvement. It wouldn't be significantly different. We found out it was a tremendous difference. It was a huge phase shift in what was capable before. With GPT-3, it was able to do things that we never realized were even, you know, you know, could even possible using that strategy. Inside the AI test kitchen, there are a few different experiences. Each is meant to give you a sense of what it might be like to have Lambda in your hands and use it for things you care about. The first is called Imagine It. This demo tests if the model can take a creative idea, you give it, and generate imaginative and relevant descriptions. These are not products, they are quick sketches that allow us to explore what Lambda can do with you. As you see, the user interfaces are very simple. Say you're writing a story and you need some inspirational ideas. Maybe one of your characters is exploring the deep ocean. You can ask what that might feel like. Here, Lambda describes a scene in the Mariana Trench. It even generates follow-up questions for you on the fly. You can ask Lambda to imagine what kind of creatures might live there. Remember, we didn't hand program the model for specific topics like submarines or bioluminescence. It synthesized these concepts from its training data. That's why you can ask about almost any topic, Saturn's rings, or even imagine being on a planet made of ice cream. Like other ML models, it's trying to predict something. You give it some text, and it tries to guess what happens next. If you give an ML model that's trained on images and you say, who is this? It's making a prediction. And so that's sort of the easiest way to think about any ML is basically it's trying to make predictions. Sometimes it can become what comes next. Sometimes it can be what's missing, but it's trying to make a guess. And it makes that guess by training on a large amount of data or by teaching itself when you have something like reinforcement learning. So a prompt is the text we send to GP3 to make a prediction about what should come next. So if I, I'll give you some examples, you'll see these things, but that's what we call the text. When you hear me use the term prompt, just basically it's natural language, plain language things that I tell GPT-3 and then it tries to come up with a completion. When you see the examples of what it can do and it can do a lot, none of these were things it was told to do. There was nobody programming it how to be a chat bot or a classifier. Nobody sat down and said, let me program the system to do these things. It taught itself how to do that. Think about that. When you see these demonstrations, it learned to do this by reading large amounts of text from all kinds of sources. And so that's what's cool and kind of spooky about it is that part of what I get to do is I get to play around and try to figure out what else can it do? What has it taught itself? And sometimes you can even ask it. And sometimes you just have to observe and see what it wants to do. Staying on topic is a challenge for language models. Say you're building a learning experience. You want it to be open-ended enough to allow people to explore where curiosity takes them, but stay safely on topic. Our second demo tests how Lambda does with that. In this demo, we have primed the model to focus on the topic of dogs. It again starts by generating a question to spark conversation. Have you ever wondered why dogs love to play fetch so much? And if you ask a follow-up question, you get an answer with some relevant details. 
it's interesting. Uh, it thinks uh, it might have something to do with the sense of smell and treasure hunting. You can take the conversation any way you want. Maybe you're curious about how smell works, and you just want to dive deeper. You'll get a unique response for that, too. No matter what you ask, it'll try to keep the conversation on the topic of dogs. If I start asking about cricket, which I probably would, the model brings the topic back to dogs in a I do think dogs would make <laughs> Now, the challenge of staying on topic is a tricky one. It's an important area of research for building useful applications with language models. There's a setting that you'll see me adjust, and it's probably the most important setting outside of what you tell it, and that's temperature. As a model, it makes predictions. And what temperature does is temperature affects the randomness of the predictions. So if you give a model a sequence and you say, okay, predict what comes next, it could give you a very narrow, like I'm pretty sure this is the best fit, but if you increase the temperature, it has a wider range of probabilities. And so you can go on different paths and we'll see this in practice. There's another setting called top P, which is another way to sort of adjust this randomness. And that deals with sort of a different algorithm for defining you know, what should come next, which is based on something called nucleus sampling. A lot of the papers on this stuff, a lot of this research is only a couple years old. And that's kind of what's exciting is that you, for people out there that feel like, hey, this sounds neat, but maybe it's already, this rocket's already launched, or I don't feel like I can be part of it. I was only a hobbyist a year ago. I had an interest in AI and I'd done some stuff for my own applications, but I was a person that was just pursuing it as my own sort of interest. And then playing with GPT-3 and finding its potential, I found, you know, a place for me to come and do something really cool to, for AI to be inclusive for AI to impact the world in a positive way. We need a lot of people thinking about AI. We need as many people thinking about it from as many points of view as possible in background. As a team, we've learned a lot on this project, and this will be the first ever live demo of Lambda from stage. Are you all ready to see how it works? <laughs> all right, here I am in the AI Test Kitchen app. I'm going to open up this demo called Listit. Now, Listit explores if Lambda can take a complex goal or topic and break it down into relevant subtasks. It can help me figure out what I'm trying to do and generate useful ideas I might not have thought of. If you love to-do lists like I do, this is a dream come true. I'm going to tap Start, and this is a project I've been thinking a lot about lately. Plant a vegetable garden. I'll send this off to Lambda, and there it is. On the fly, it's come up with these different steps and broken it down into this list of subtasks. I can see things like make a list of what I want to grow, the location. I can also regenerate a list on the fly to get even more ideas. Now, what's interesting about these is I can quickly drop into one of them. Let's say this one, like what might grow in the area. And you can see it will give me further suggestions. I can keep going, breaking this down, where eventually it gives me a list of what I might want to plant, like tomatoes or lettuce or garlic. We'll keep garlic out of it this time. One of the other things Lambda does is not just break down lists, but you can generate a tip. So here, when I tap Generate a Tip, oh, it's never seen this one before, actually. It's telling me if I have a small yard or patio. It gives me different vegetables I might be able to grow. Now, when we think about products like this and experiences like this, it's much more than just coming up with a list of vegetables to grow. If I scroll back up, you can see all the different pathways that Lambda is helping me think through and giving me tips along the way. And just like that, this whole task feels a lot less daunting. I came on board before I worked at OpenAI. I was just a, another developer playing around with it. And I was just like you know, a kid at Christmas. Every, I was spent every day, all day long, playing around with it, seeing what could it do. And the thing that really blew me away is this next example. I'm going to show you what this is. GPT-3 can summarize text. And there are other models that can summarize. That's one of the ways in which we measure the capability of ML models is, for certain language models, is one of us can it, general models is can it summarize text. The thing is, most summarizers, what they do is they might look for either key sentences or a few key words. Some of them will actually rephrase it, which is be a bigger model. GPT-3 can read through a large amount of text, rephrase it, and write it for a particular age level. 
So here we have some text and we say, we tell GPT-3, read through this passage and tell, tell it, how would you explain it to a second grader, okay? Explain it to a child. And let's see if this works with this setting. And it says Jupiter is a big planet. It's very big. It's much bigger than all the other planets in the solar system put together, okay? So that's explaining it to a kid. Now think about what's going on. It's reading through the text and knows we're talking about Jupiter. It takes information from that text. And I've, I've done this with information that's not even in its knowledge base, understands it knows a lot about the world. And it goes through there and says, okay, this is how it's simplified. And also it has a kind of an understanding of like what it means to explain something to what a second grader is. It knows that's a kid. And that's a very powerful thing. If I just ask it to you know, explain it to an adult, it would give me a little bit more technical. So think about what you can do with an application of the ability to take a large amount of information and synthesize it. So much of our daily life is filled with all this information coming at us and it's very hard to keep on top of it. Now we have AI systems that can summarize that and keep it simple. 